Hey friends, welcome to the workstation. As you can see from uh, from the environment and the surroundings, uh, I'm in Hungary at family. Um, it's uh, was this December 29 as I'm recording this, and um, we made it to Hungary to the family, and now you know it's kind of the home stretch of uh, of finishing up the paper. It's kind of magical, you know, to be able to to like work on a paper in the morning and then you know like struggle with I don't know formatting LaTeX tables and then just be able to just like walk down and then spend some time with family. It's just such high quality breaks to take. It's it's amazing. So this week was about editing and editing text uh, to be precise. So I mentioned last week that I, I wrote out the first pass of my manuscript in, in one early morning session and really just like full sent it and then created the canvas. And my supervisor, she was an absolute gem and left a bunch of comments in there. And when I say a bunch of comments, like more stuff had a highlight color in Overleaf than what didn't. I think, you know, during my my, my thesis, uh, my bachelor or my master's, I would have been super intimidated by that because, you know, it's like, oh my God, did I do this so wrong and everything. And then by now it's just like, oh my God, Thank God, feedback, finally, I can work with this. I just find it such a nice thing to be able to like pinpoint, like, hey, change this sentence or rewrite this and stuff like this, or just like, you know, even a single question mark, which I always find the funniest, uh, funniest comment, uh, even a single question mark can like get you thinking like, hey, this sentence needs some more thought. And it was a really nice experience to kind of be able to work through those. So I spent a few mornings working through my uh, my my theory. That was a one one uh, batch of stuff and comments. I worked through those, and then I worked through my methods, and then and then I spent some time formatting tables in LaTeX. Uh, because the Academy of Management style guide does not have a template associated with it. Um, neither Word nor LaTeX nor nothing. So <laughs> I found a template on Overleaf but it did not really give like like table specifications so i had to kind of like puzzle it together from a bunch of places and it was it was it was really annoying but now it's done now i have my little nested regression tables and it looks pretty and everything i think what i wanted to talk about today is kind of making the editing process fun and that's a bit of a strong ask i guess for a lot of people because like editing text is usually just like not particularly fun and not particularly entertaining so how i made my editing fun is by learning vim uh, <laughs> if you if you work with computers you probably know all the memes about not being able to quit vim uh, or if you if you once did a git commit without uh, without a dash m or forgot to add the little message into a git commit and then you found yourself in in vim and you couldn't exit and oh my god what's happening uh, so that was probably everyone's first experience with vim mine too but i have some friends who are really into computers and they swear by vim so i figured hey you know maybe there is something to it watching someone who is good at vim like vim motions just like edit text and interact with text it always feels like magic so i always want to learn it and of course like what's a better time to learn some new tech is uh, when you have a manuscript uh, deadline so <laughs> i i picked up uh, picked up my th vim, vim key bindings again uh, mostly as procrastination or like rest to just like do something else the, and then i figured you know if if I get them right, like at the minimum level, then uh, then I can I can just like make the editing a bit more fun. And fun fact, Overleaf has Vim key bindings, so you can work through your paragraphs and delete and yank and paste and move stuff around and 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 interact with your manuscript using Vim key bindings. You know, I'm not very good at Vim yet, so it's it's not the efficiency gain that helped me about like about vim right because if you talk to programmers they will swear by oh my god vim is so much faster and everything and it's like yes if you're good at it but i want to make the case that you don't need to be really good at it to get benefits from it for me this just added an extra layer of fun to a task that is otherwise quite arduous right because just like working through text and moving paragraphs around and rewriting sentences and deleting stuff and pasting stuff it's not fun right it's it's a it's a difficult task but by adding this extra layer of novelty you know instead of like like highlighting stuff and then deleting and then cutting and pasting just like Th taking a moment to think like oh what what bind would do this and then hitting like i don't know di uh, and paragraph and whatever and stuff like that just makes it a little tiny bit more fun uh, and that just enables me to go longer and then and then i think it's just like a super funny side effect of of adding a bit of novelty to to your workflow so that's kind of what i've been up to uh it's always a bit difficult 
to to get like deep work done um, here here at the parents' place, right? Um, because you know I want to spend the time with the family and and like you know really make sure that that I get my time with them, right? Because I don't see them all that often. But at the same time, kind of it's also nice to have this this strong strong switch, as I said in the very beginning, like taking a break. And then just like immediately switching off of a work mode and just like crashing down on the couch with a coffee in hand. It's very nice. So yeah, you know, it's also, you know, it's kind of like end of December. So we are also full of activities like New Year's and going ice skating with friends and everything. So I really found that I need to get work done in the morning so I can enjoy the evenings and like kind of like really tune out and, and then take some time to just like, you know, enjoy the time with family and friends. And that worked really well. And um, and then, yeah, that's uh, that's about the plan until the deadline. We will just continue doing this. Apologies for the bit of a scrambled video, as you can see. Oh, it, it died, but I've been like neck deep in plotting moderation stuff. And I remember like, oh shit, it's Sunday. You know, between the holidays when you forget like what day it is, it's like, oh shit, Sunday, I have to for film a video. So this is a bit of a stream of consciousness type of situation. I cut most of it out. Uh, <laughs> so what you've just seen is the polished version. I did my best. So. Yeah, uh, I think the next update is going to be like three days before the deadline, because now we're like nine days, eight days out. Um, yeah, so next update is going to be three days out. Uh, by then, I will have uh, feedback from my second supervisor. So yeah, my theory and my methods are basically done. I will need to finish up my my results because I run into some weird suppressor effect. So if you are very statistically savvy, like drop anything I need to know about the suppressor effect. I read a bit about it, but it's just like, it feels super weird. So I'm not really sure kind of how to interpret that. So I will have to get some help from my second supervisor. Yeah, then discussion intro abstract, pack it up and send it out. So hopefully by the time you watch the next episode of this, it should be basically a full manuscript and then only just like, you know, putting a bit of a bells and whistles on it. So yeah, that's the plan for now. Um, see you next week.